Good morning brothers and sisters and welcome to our Easter Sunday service. We decided today that we would visit the place where we should have been had circumstances been different. But things as they are, we're here with a bit of scaffolding, a bit of fencing, but nevertheless back in our home here at Hornsey. I hope this service brings you and finds you well and that you are in as good a spirits as possible and have a happy and blessed Easter Sunday service. We're going to hear some hymns, we're going to hear some readings and we're going to have a message. So I hope this can bring you some hope and some joy in the sure and certain hope that we have in the resurrection of Jesus Christ on this glorious Easter Sunday morning. Show the way to me I know who holds the future And he'll guide me with his hand If God things don't just happen Everything by him is planned And as I face tomorrow With its problems large and small I'll trust the God Keep me to the end I know joys and griefs there are but one I know is fully knows I'll trust his loving care and I know Easter Sunday reading from the Passion Week and Eastertide reading book will be taking place in a garden, just like the Resurrection. The Resurrection At the first day of the week was dawning, there was suddenly a great earthquake. For an angel of the Lord, descending from heaven, came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothing white as snow. For fear of him, the guards shook 
and became like dead men. Jesus appears to the women. At the early dawn, the women came to the tomb, taking the spices they had prepared. Mary Magdalene saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved. When the sun had risen, Mary, the mother of James and Salome, went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, Who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man, dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. The angel said to the women, Do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised, as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples he has been raised from the dead. And indeed he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message for you. So they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them and said, Greetings. And they came to him, took hold of his feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. The report of the guard. While they were going, some of the guard went to the city and told the chief priests everything that had happened. After the priests had assembled with the elders, they devised a plan to give a large sum of money to the soldiers, telling them, You must say, his disciples came by night and stole him away while we were asleep. If this comes to the governor's ears, we will satisfy him and keep you out of trouble. So they took the money and did as they were directed. And this story is still told among the Jews till this day. Peter and John at the tomb. Mary Magdalene ran to Simon Peter and to the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciple set out and went towards the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there, and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who reached the tomb first, also went in. And he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. The disciples returned to their homes, amazed at what had happened. Jesus appears to Mary. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you crying? She said to them, They have taken my, away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? For whom are you looking? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabunai, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. Emmaus Now, on that same day two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them. 
but their eyes were kept from recognising him. And he said to them, What are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place in these days? He asked them, What things? They replied, The things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group were standard us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are! And how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on, but they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened and they recognised him and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, Were not our hearts burning with us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem. They found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, The Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told them what had happened on the road, and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. Jesus appears to the disciples. While they were talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. The doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked. He said to them, Why are you frightened? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While they while in their joy they were still disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. He said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, must, the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written, that the Messiah is to suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. Jesus appears to Thomas. Thomas, who was called the twin, was one of the twelve. But he was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later his disciples were again in the house and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put 
your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hands and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed of those are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. By the lake. After these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples by the Sea of Tiberias. And he showed himself in this way. Gathered there were together were Simon Peter, Thomas called the twin, Nathaniel of Cana in Galilee, and the sons of Zebedee, and two others of his disciples. Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. They said to him, We will go with you. They went out and got in the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Just after daybreak, Jesus stood on the beach, but the disciples did not know it was Jesus. Jesus said to them, Children, have you no fish? Have you? They answered him, No. He said to them, Cast the net to the right side of the boat, and you will find some. So they cast it, and now they were not able to hold it in, because there were so many fish. The disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. When Simon Peter heard it was the Lord, he put on some clothes, for he was naked, and jumped into the lake. But the other disciples came in the boat, dragging the net full of fish. But they were not far from land, only about a hundred yards off. When they had gone ashore, they saw a charcoal fire there with fish on it and some bread. Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish that you have just caught. So Simon Peter went aboard and hauled the net ashore, full of large fish, a hundred and fifty-three of them. And though there were so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, Come and have breakfast. Now none of the disciples dared ask him, Who are you? Because they knew it was the Lord. Jesus came and took the bread and gave it to them, and did the same with the fish. This was now the third time that Jesus had appeared to the disciples after he was raised from the dead. Peter restored. When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? He said to them, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my lambs. A second time he said to them, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Tend my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter felt hurt because he said to him the third time, Do you love me? And he said to them, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my sheep. Very truly I tell you, when you were younger, you used to fasten your own belt and go wherever you wished. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will fasten a belt around you and take you where you do not wish to go. He said this to indicate the kind of death by which he would glorify God. After this he said to him, Follow me. Peter turned and saw the disciple whom Jesus loved following them. He was the one who had reclined next to Jesus at the supper and, and said, Lord, who is it that's going to betray you? When Peter saw him, he said to Jesus, Lord, what about him? Jesus said to him, It is my will that he remain until I come. What is that to you? Follow me. So the rumour spread in the community that the disciple would not die, yet Jesus did not say to him that he would not die, but if it is my will that he remain until I come, what is that to you? The Mission to the World Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. Epilogue There are also many other things that Jesus did. If every one of them were written down, I suppose the world itself could not contain the books that would be written. 
But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have a life in his name. May God add his blessings to those readings. For this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. about where I might video this Easter message. I thought initially I'll use the office in the Mance where I've done other bits of recording. Then I thought, I know, I'll go out in the garden. I love the garden in spring, especially for Easter. It's such a powerful message of hope and new birth. You can hear the trees rustling with the leaves again. You can hear the birds singing. You can see the plants growing and flowers blooming. But then I reflected on all the changes, all the challenges that we have faced as a church over these last year and especially over the last nine months or so. We were all very saddened to hear that Sister Aurora Skeppel was called home to God's greater service earlier this week. Sister Aurora was such a faithful, powerful, God-loving, people-loving human being. She had such care for her church and for her brothers and her sisters and her family in this church. And for her own actual biological family as well, of course. Her loss is really going to be felt. And we pray honestly and earnestly for all the family at this difficult time. Made all the more difficult by the restrictions and the conditions that we find ourselves in. But earlier, we remember that we, we lost Sister Geraldine Skeppel as well. Another huge part of this congregation and a vital member of that same family. We also lost Sister Dottie Foster this year. And then on Boxing Day, right here in this building, 
there was a fire that ripped through this building and caused huge damage. And then we're in the situation that we now find ourselves in. With the world living in fear and us not being able to meet together as we would have so usually done. So I decided that it was time to bring you home. I realised that actually I've been quite lucky in the lockdown. As much as it's been difficult, it's been an awful lot more work for me. And we've also had to balance having the children at home full time. So it's not been easy. But there's been many reasons why I'm lucky. And one of them is that I've been able to come in here. And I've seen the progress that is being made. Whilst you're, after you're, you finish watching this video and whilst you're on our Facebook page, just please go and have a look at our photographs. I try to post them as regularly as I can see actual, like, visual progress. But every time I come in, it's become that much closer to being finished. And I'm so excited. So excited, brothers and sisters, to bring you back because it's going to look wonderful. And so, Easter Sunday... This felt like the right place to be. Not only is this our church building, but this is the site of a very practical, very tactile, very visual rebirth. When Jesus rose from the dead, it showed us that in God all things are possible. And that even in the darkest of hours, there is always hope. Hope of a God for whom even death could be overcome. It gained us this new covenant in Christ. Forged in love. Speaking of the gardening, I was out there last weekend cutting back some ivy and some thorn bushes, and uh, I still have the scars today, you can just about see. Just from a simple thorn bush, I got a few thorns in my arms and a few scratches along the line. I came out of it looking like I'd been in a fight with a hundred cats. But it made me think and reflect on all that Jesus went through. We forget the pain of the crown of thorns. And if you ever find yourselves taking for granted the pain and the suffering that Jesus went through, I suggest a bit of gardening. Jesus suffered and died. And as he hung there and suffered, the words he shouted were not words of pain or anguish or hatred or anger. Father, forgive them. And then Easter Sunday, the most impossible thing happened. Out of the tomb, the very place that symbolizes death, the very place where he had laid dead, became the site of hope, of rebirth, of resurrection. I've often described our church historically as the Phoenix Church. In the Moravian Church, we have a long history of oppression, of challenges, of near extinction. And yet, we are here. 
And not only are we here, we are around the world. A truly worldwide church. From that hidden seed, we have grown back to doing God's work. And when the work here in this place is ready for us to come in, ready for us to worship again, to raise the roof. We will rise like a phoenix. This church building was so close, so very close to being no more. I've had a number of conversations with the builders and I think they found it quite a a moving and comforting experience seeing just how close we were. If you go up to the ceiling, you can see that the wood cladding that sits beneath the actual outside roof had about two millimeters at best before it would have given in and the roof would have caught fire and we would have been faced not with a renovation job but with a rebuild this church just would not have survived we were minutes minutes away I have no doubt no doubt in my mind that God was watching over this building because God had a plan as God always does he has a plan for this building. He has a plan for the people within it. And so when we are back, we will have our own resurrection. We will rise again like the phoenix from the flames of that Boxing Day fire. So here I sit, not too far from where I would have been on a normal Sunday morning only it's an empty church but it's a church full of promise it is of course tremendously sad whenever we lose a part of our church community but I was reflecting on how symbolic a time it is to be grieving because as I mentioned to Sister Aurora's son Carl in a few days time I said we're going to be talking about hope we're going to be talking about resurrection and how for God even death was not the end it's an appropriate time to be thinking about that and I hope that the family and you all are able to take some words of comfort from it. God so loved the world that he gave his only son. And that son died in agony and was raised in glory. And because of his resurrection, the world would go on to know the love of God. On this Easter Sunday, I pray that those words of hope fill your heart. All things pass. All things are temporary. All pain, all suffering, all hardship pass. There will be an Easter for us all. There will be a moment where we look back and we go, Whoa, we've been for a lot, let's move forward now. There will be a moment where we are back here in this place and we are singing loud hosannas and we are singing praises to the God that has not only saved this building but has saved us all. There will be that time. And until then, let us keep together 
in thought, in prayer, in word and deed. Let us hold each other, lift each other up and offer words of comfort and of hope. My dear brothers and sisters, how I long to be back in this place with you all. But until that time, let us keep firm. Let us keep strong. Let us keep faithful in the promise that we have in the risen Christ. That all things pass and everyone has their Easter's. We will have our time. Because God has saved us. Has saved this building. Has saved each and every one of us. For a reason. May God bless you all and grant you a happy, blessed, hopeful Easter. Amen. we thank you for this glorious Easter morning when the world has hope again hope in a God for whom even death was not the end we thank you for the gift of your son Jesus Christ whose resurrection we celebrate this day that although he hung and suffered upon a tree he rose again that although he hung there in pain and suffering and agony he chose words of forgiveness and love not hate Lord we ask that you help us to live lives of love may we follow in the example that we have been set and live out Christ's new commandment to love one another as we have been loved by him Lord we know that we live in uncertain difficult and scary times and we pray for all those who are finding things really hard for all those who are mourning the loss of loved ones and we think especially at the moment of sister Aurora Skeppel and all her family and all her friends at this extremely difficult time. May you be with them. May you give them your strength and reaffirm in them the hope of a brighter tomorrow. And this glorious Easter morn, may you bring hope to the hopeless and healing to the sick. Lord, we give thanks for all the doctors and the nurses and the carers and all those who are working so hard to care for those in need and we pray that this time of hardship will come to an end soon for we know that through you all things pass and that even death itself is not something that has a hold on us Lord we pray for this nation and for our world that when things do return when we can meet together again we learn from this time and we meet in love and embrace in fellowship and continue this spirit of helping each other that has been so positive to see we thank you gracious God that you have given us literally everything that we can hear the sounds of spring and see the beauty of the trees and the, and the plants and the flowers blossoming. 
we thank you for your glorious creation and that Easter Sunday where we show we were shown that all things are possible we lay our lives at your feet gracious God and we ask that you bless us bless our loved ones our family our friends bless this whole world with your love that all may know the hope the love and the joy that comes from knowing you and knowing your son the risen saviour for this and all things we pray through the name of jesus christ our lord and saviour the risen king amen let us say together the prayer that jesus taught us to say when we say our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory for ever and ever amen so that brings an end to our Easter Sunday service I hope that you have been able to take some words of comfort and the message of hope from this and that this day and this week and the months ahead you may continue to find the hope that we have in the resurrection of Jesus Christ our Lord and Saviour may God go with you always and bless you in all that you do and all that you are and all that you say and all that you are feeling and anywhere that you are finding yourselves in may you know of God's presence and of our love let's share the grace together the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore Amen